Greetings everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks again for joining me. Tonight we're going to do the last little bit of restoration on this Model 4. So this is the same Model 4 that was in my previous restoration videos. I got the new case top and nameplate from Jay Newarth. I have restored some of the keys on the keyboard, though I didn't make a video out of that. Some of the keys didn't work, so I ended up hitting them with a conductive paint pen and cleaned up the floppy drives and got them all lubricated. So tonight we have the last little bit. We've got this serial card uh, because the previous serial card had some very stinky and cracked ICs. We've got the Model 4 here and we've got some whiskey. So with these three things and a screwdriver I'm going to take apart this Model 4, get the motherboard out, we're going to put this serial card in, put it back together and try it out. So let's get this thing apart. When I got this machine, there were more than a couple screws missing. I was able to find equivalents for all but one of the spots. The front three keyboard screws I did have. The screw on the back of the case behind the CRT on the top, that one's long gone. But the, the front three machine screws and these machine screws I had and the wider threaded screws here, I'm missing this guy, but I have the ones in the back. So what we're going to do is pull all of these out. Things were apart, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this back over, and then the two screws, the machine screws, are still here, so while I flip it over, I'll just keep my hands under there so I can catch those screws. So here we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I like to tip this and just set it down gently in each of the turns, so... You've got to be careful to keep the top and the bottom together, because if they separate and the top comes off, it's possible the neck of the screen or the back of the CRT can crash into the, the assembly behind it, the chassis, and that would be bad. So, unless you want to say goodbye to a CRT, I've got my hands under here, we're just going to, oh, there goes that one, you know what, you're out, so I'm just going to slide you over. There we go. Now the computer is back right side up. Let's remove that cover. I have limited space here, but it's not too big a deal. So what we're going to do is the cover is going to come kind of up and toward me and off. And the key with this is I always pull, as I'm lifting up, I pull the cover toward me and let the back screw brackets on the back there scrape against the back of the chassis. And this works because the CRT is not scraping against the back of the chassis, so I don't have to worry about breaking the neck of the CRT. And what I'm going to do is as soon as I get this off, I will disconnect the connector between the motherboard and the CRT, and then I will put the top of the case someplace else. And we're off. It's that easy. So now, you probably can't see it. I will turn it. We just have a connection to disconnect here. And I'm not letting go of this because if it falls, I will cry. I'm just going to disconnect the CRT interface cable here, which has the power in the interface and the ground wire. And now this can go someplace else and we can work on the rest of the machine. It's time for a whiskey break. Mm, 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 mm. Ah, that's the taste of courage. And also whiskey. We have a bunch of screws to remove. So we have the two along the top, got these guys in the back, and on the side here we have two. In addition, we have two more screws that we have to remove. The shielding is now loose. We have to be careful with this power cable if I just yank on this, I could slice it, so we'll just hold this here. Give this a lift. You can see here where the serial port should go. The connector here is already empty. Its power cable is actually floating around here someplace, so we'll dig that up. But in the meantime, uh, we have the floppy drive connector we have to remove. We have other, some inter other interface connectors, the cassette port. Uh, the keyboard connector will come off. All right, the two screws I didn't remove before were the keyboard, the connector on the shielding here with the keyboard. Um, that holds the keyboard cable in and grounds it out, so I had to remove that, so we've done that, so we'll just disconnect this. This is the soundboard. Floppy drives, you want to be real careful of these. These don't really have a lot of insertion cycles and tend to suck. Although some of the community does sell these, so I guess if I broke one I could order one. Okay, I have a ground cable. Okay, those are all going to the side. Cassette interface. Okay, now we have a bunch of screws to remove. I 
triangle out. Now you have to be careful here. So you've got the card edge connectors and the cassette port. In fact, that screw is still in there. But I'm just going to remove that. And there we go. Beautiful, early revision, heavily reworked TRS-80 Model 4 motherboard. We're back after a cut of unknown duration. So in taking out the old serial card, I took the screws out. I don't know where I put them. So actually maybe I do. So after I got the motherboard out, you might have noticed a little surprise when I didn't leave the screws in here. Usually when I take something out and I'm going to replace it, I put the screws inside the case. This time I didn't do that. Wondering why. Well, that's neither here nor there, because I want to get the serial card in. So what I've done is, until I can find them, and I have a couple of caches of parts for these machines I'll have to go through, but until I find them, I have robbed two screws from the floppy drive controller that I will use to affix the serial card, and we will put it together and test it out. And that's it. It's in. Um, when I find the other screws, I will take this apart and put them back in. All right, so here we go. Let's get the motherboard back and let's get that mounted back up. All right, one thing I did was I didn't plug in the power connector before I put the board on because I got ahead of myself. But that's okay, easy to fix. The connector's right here. Actually, I can get my hands right down there, so we're just gonna line that up. If I can get my fingers on it. There we are. And we're lined up, and we're just gonna push down on you. Perfect, you can't see that. But actually, I lined it up pretty good. Perfect, all right. And finally, this guy connects Looks like it's in pretty good shape. I don't want to bend it too much, but this slides in. Perfect. Floppy drive connector slides in. Perfect. And now what we have is a completely installed, except two screws, a serial, serial card. So let's get this put back together. Okay, given my limited work area, I have this here. Obviously, my hand is not leaving this. Um, I've connected the interface connector and the ground, and we're going to drop this on. Now, what I tend to do with this is lean it back and toward me, so the, the screen up here. Again, trying to drag the chassis bits. Probably can't see that through the camera, but um, the chassis uh, fasteners against the back of the chassis here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this forward. I'm looking through the disk drive holes, all the way forward with it. And that's it. And it is now back. So now that we're back together, I'm going to flip this back over, get the screws in, and then we're going to plug it in and try it out. And there we are. New serial card. Might be missing a couple screws, but you know, who isn't? So what we're going to do now is we're going to plug it in and try it out. The first test here, we're going to power it up and make sure it doesn't smoke. Okay, that's good. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to boot it up with a boot disk. And I'm going to connect it to one of the other machines, and we're going to see if we get characters back and forth. And I think the machine we're going to connect it to is the Tandy 1000 SX. So let's do that. Okay, so on the Model 4, we have Tristos 6.0 booted. And if we look behind it, there is a cable coming out the back. 
and it's going all the way over here past the Apple IIe over to my Tandy 1000SX onto which I have also set matching communications parameters. So I figured I've done that in other videos, I'll save you watching that. So here we go, let's get the terminal going. Yeah, fine. And now we'll open, load up COM on the TRS-80 and we'll see if we can type back and forth. All right, so I'm gonna go over the Tandy 1000, I'm gonna type some stuff. And we have it, hello, you rummy buzzard, although apparently I didn't hit shift before I hit the exclamation point, but that would just be bad typing. And now what we're gonna do is type on the Model 4 and see if it shows up on the Tandy 1000. Okay, I apologize for the contrast on the screen there, but the blues darken with the camera. So here we go, let's try this. Yep, did I say yummy buzzard? No, nope, rummy. Perfect. Okay, we have communications. Well, yeah, farts are fun. Duh, because there was the previous sentence, but either way. All right, so we have, and I apparently didn't type the T hard enough, so it says farts are fun. So actually that would have fit, let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. So there we go, hell yeah, farts are fun. So we have successful serial communication between the restored Model 4 and the Tandy 1000. So that's it, that's getting the serial card installed in the Model 4. This machine is now completely restored, although the floppy drive has a bit of a sound. So while I have it apart again for the other four screws, I will probably service the floppy drives again. Make sure they are properly lubricated again and any other issues are taken care of. They seem to work okay, but I do hear a bit of a repetitive noise in there, so we'll just deal with that while we can. Anyway, thank you for watching. Until next time, stay classy.